Bambi by Felix Sultan. Chapter Five. Time went by, and Bambi went through many new experiences. It sometimes even more made him dizzy, having to so many things to learn. Now he knows how to listen, not just hear what is happening nearby, so close that it forces itself to your ears. No, there is certainly no art in that. Now he can listen properly, with the understanding to anything that happens, however gently it moves. He can listen to every fine rustling that a wind brings in. He knows, for instance, when there is a pheasant running through the undergrowth, he recognises quite exactly that gentle scurrying that continually stops and starts again. He can even recognise the mice in the woods from the sound they make. They run to and fro from the little journeys they make. Then there are the moles who rush around in circles, making a rustling noise under the elder bushes. When they're in a good mood, he knows the brash, clear call of falcons and listens to as it changes to an angry tone the hawk or an eagle comes close. That makes him them cross because they fear their territory might be taken from them. It also knows the sound of woodland pigeons. They flap their wings, a lovely distant swish. The ducks as they flap their wings and many other sounds. He's slowly learning to understand things by his sense of smell. He will soon understand them as well as his mother. He can understand that. He can understand what he is smelling as soon as he draws in a breath. Oh, that's clover, that's rowan. He thinks when the wind is blowing in from the meadow. He can smell when his friend, the hare, is out is outdoors. I can tell that very well. Also among all the smells of leaves, soil, herbs, wild onions, you can tell when the polecat is coming part is going past by putting his nose to the ground and testing it thoroughly. You can smell that the fox has been there. You might notice that somewhere nearby there were his relatives, Aunt Edna, with the children. He now is now completely at ease with the night. He no longer feels such a great longing to go and run out about like the day. Now he's happy to spend his days lying in a little shady space in the ground growth of his mother. He hears the heatless air. He sleeps. Now and then he wakes up and listens to smells, which is the proper thing to do. Everything is as it should be. There's only the little tits who would sometimes chatter at each other, the midges in the grass, who are almost never able to stay quiet, talk among themselves. The wood pigeons never stop proclaiming their gentleness. I do so with enthusiasm. What does it all, all that matter to Bambi? He goes back to sleep. Now he's very fond of the night. Everything is gay, everything is moving. You also, of course, have to be careful in the night time. But you have less to worry about. You can go anywhere you want to. Everywhere, everywhere you could go, could come across people you know. And you, they too be more carefree than they were. They are at other times. In the night, the forest is solemn, solemn and quiet, silent. There are voices to her be heard. There are voices to heard, but just a few of them, and they are in all this stillness. They seem loud. They seem sound dif- different from the daytime voices. They are more effective. Bambi enjoys hearing the owl. She is so dignified as she flies perfectly silently, perfectly effortless. effortless. A butterfly is quiet just because of its size. Her size. The owl is, is so immense. Her face is so imposing, so determined, full of so much fault. Her eyes are so majestic. Bambi admires her firm gaze of its quiet courage. He enjoys listening when he, she's talked to his mother one time or with anyone else. He stands slightly to one side, a little afraid, that imperious grace. He admires so much he does not understand much of the clever things she says. But he does. No, they are clever. And that enchants him. Fills him with admiration for the owl. 
yell again as it begins the song. Ha 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 she sings. Sounds different from the song of the thrush or the cuckoo go crush of the golden oriel. Different from the friendly mot- mot- motif motif of the cuckoo. Bambi loves the song, the owl, because he feels a secretive earnestness in it, indescribable cleverness and mysterious melancholy. Then the tawny owl is there again, a charming little lad, dignified, fateful, and more inquisitive than most. He always wants to stir up a fuss. Yarkery, yarkery, he calls in a voice that's shrill, terrifying and very piercing. It sounds as if his life were in danger. He's a cheerful character. It delights, it delights him when he startles for someone. Here he cry, he shouts so loudly he alarms everyone in the wood within half an hour's distance. But when he has a gentle, cooling laugh for he just for himself, and you can only hear it when you are right next to him. Bambi had realised that Tony Owl is pleased when he startles someone, or if someone thinks something awful has happened to him. And ever since... Whatever the tawny town, and ever since whatever the tawny town, owl, the boy rushes to and asks, "Has something happened to you?" We might sigh and say, "Oh, you really startled me." Then the owl feels very satisfied. Yes, yes, he says with a laugh. It's quite a distressing sound, isn't it? Puffs out his feathers so that he can looks like a soft grey bull. It looks very charming. A couple of times. There had been thunder and lightning both day and night. First time it was at by day, and Bambi felt how he became afraid when, in his leafy bedroom in the woods, it became darker and darker. It seemed to him that the night had fallen down from the sky in the middle of the day. Then as the storm roared his way through the woods, so that the trees began to groan loudly. Bambi looked shook with fear. As the lightning lit up the sky and thunder roared, Bambi went mad with the horror of it and thought the world was about to be torn to pieces. He ran between his mo- behind his mother, who was slightly unsettled, and jumped to her feet, was walking to and fro in the thicket, and able to think, and able to understand. Then the rain burst in an angry gush. Everyone had hidden himself away. The woods seemed empty. There was nobody to f- nowhere to flee. He in the thickest undergrowth, you were wi- you were whipped by the water as it rushed through. But the lightning stopped flashing. Its fiery beams no longer flamed their way through the tops, of the trees. The thunder moved away, and there was only a distant rumbling to be heard. Before it's entirely silent. Now the rain became gentler. Its broad patter could be heard everywhere, but powerfully. For another hour, the forester, breathing deeply in the still air, allowed itself to be soaked. No one now was afraid to stand in the open. The feeling was gone, washed away by the rain. Bambi and his mother had never gone out into the meadow as early as they did that evening. In fact, it was hardly even the evening. The sun was still high in the sky, it was a powerful freshness in the air. It had a richer fragrance than at any other time. The woods sang with a thousand voices, for so everyone had come out of his hiding place, it was hurrying around to each other in their excitement to tell them all what they had been just experienced. While stepping out into the meadow, they had to pass by a big oak tree standing right at the edge of the woods. Just beside their path, they had to pass by this big, beautiful tree every time they went out into onto the meadow. The time. It was a squirrel sitting in on one of its branches. He wished him good evening. Bambi and the squirrel were good friends with each other. First time he met Bambi, thought that the squirrel was a very small deer because of his red coat and stared at him in amazement. But Bambi really was too young at the time. Simply could not understand anything. Right from the start, he felt an exceptional liking for the squirrel. He was so well-mannered in every way. The way he spoke was so pleasant. Bambi adored the wonderful way he performed aerobatics, how he climbed, how he jumped, and how he f- kept his balance. He would take part in conversation while running up and down the smooth oak trunk of the tree as if there were nothing at all. 
He sat upright on the branch of the tree as it moved to and fro. He leant, he leant comfortably against his bushy tail, which rose up high and handsome behind him. He showed his white breast, moved his front paws in great elegance, turned his head to the left and right, laughed with merry eyes in a very short time. You see so many entertaining or interesting things. And in a very short time... Does everyone need customer support today? We've got you. Intercom has the tools to manage support at any scale, like integrations, bots, and more. All in one powerful platform. We'll even automatically resolve 33% of your support volume, so you have more time for customers who need you most. Oh, that's better. Supercharge your team's productivity and make your customers super happy with Intercom. Learn more at intercom.com slash support. You would say so many entertaining or interesting things. They came down from the tree again and did so fast in such jumps. Anyone would think he was about to fall down onto your head. He swung his long red tail vigorously and said, Hello, hello, so nice for you to drop by. While he was still far above Bambi's head, Bambi's mother stood while they, where they were. The squirrel ran down the smooth trunk. Now then, he began to chat. Did you understand that right? All right. I can see you, of course. Everything is nice and tidy. It's always the main thing, after all. Quick as flash, he ran back up the trunk, saying, No, it's too damp for me down there. Just a minute, a moment. I'll find a better place. I hope you don't mind. Thank you. I thought you wouldn't mind. We can, do, we can talk just as well from where we are now. He ran to and fro on the level branch. What's the business? What? What? What business that was, he continued. So much noise. Such a scandal that was. Just think how I was shot I am. You sneeze yourself in a squeeze yourself in a nook. Keep perfectly quiet, hardly daring to move. And the worst thing of all, sitting there like without like like that without moving. You hope of course that nothing going to happen, don't you? My tree certainly is specially suited for that sort of trick. No, it isn't can't be denied my tree is specially suited. It has to be said, I am content. However, I am far from Rome. I don't wish for any other. But when things happen like they did today, it does get you so upset, it's disgusting. The squirrel sat there in its beautiful erect tail close behind him. He showed the white of his breast and held his two front paws emotionally pressed against his heart. It is obvious that when he, when he said he had been made cross, he was telling the truth. We're, we're going out into the meadow now, said Bambi's mother, so that we can dry ourselves in the sunshine. Oh, what a clever, good idea, the squirrel exclaimed. You really are so clever, really. I always say you're so clever. A leap, single leap, he had a, was on a branch higher up. There's nothing better that he could do now than go out into the meadow, he called down. He rushed around in nimble leaps, neither tiver, tiver or tiver, and up under the canopy of the trees. I want to get you up there. Well, I can get some sunshine, he chattered contentedly. We're all soaking wet. I want to get right up high. He's not at all concerned about whether anyone was still listening to him. On the meadow, he was already very lively. Bambi's friend and hare was sitting there with his family all round him. On the end, they were standing there with her children and some other people she knew. Today, Bambi saw his father again, as they, they came slowly up from the trees. Some here, some there, then someone else appeared. He walked up, walked up slowly up and down the edge of the woods, each one in his own place. He paid no attention to anyone. He did not even talk to each other. Bambi frequently looked over at them, respectfully, but full of curiosity. And he talked with Fräulein, Gobo, and, and a few other children. He thought it would be all right to play for a little while. All of them said they agreed. Then running around in circles began. Fräulein showed that she was the merriest of them all. She was so lively and nimble. She sparked with sudden new, new ideas. Go below. Suddenly he became tired. He had been terribly afraid while the storm was raging. It made his heart beat fast. He was still, he was still doing so. Maybe Go was a little bit of a weakling, but Bambi loved him because 
It was so good natured, so helpful, and never let anyone see it when he was a bit, little bit sad. Chapter 6 Time passes and Bambi learns how good grass tastes, how tender the buds or leaves are, how sweet clover is. When he presses himself against his mother, you get some refreshment. She often pushes him away. You're not a little child anymore, she says. Sometimes she'll even be even more direct and say, Go away, leave me in peace. Sometimes mother would even would even stand up in the middle of the day in their little place in the wood, just walk away without looking to see whether Bambi following her or not. There are even times when she is walking alone along the familiar paths when she seems not to be noticed with her Bambi is trotting behind her. Like a oh boy, one day's mother is not there. The Bambi does not know how that is possible. Can I understand it? But his mother is gone and Bambi, for the first time, is alone. He bewildered, comes uneasy, comes nervous and anxious. He begins to long for her quite pitifully. Very sadly, he stands there and calls to her. No one answers. No one comes. He listens. He smells the air. Nothing. He calls again gently into the side himself. Imploringly, he calls, Mother! Mother! All in vain. Now he's gripped with doubts to whether he can endure it. So he begins to walk. He runs along all the paths. He you knows, stops and calls out, walks on the hesitant steps, fearful, unable to understand. He is very sad. He carries on walking and finds himself on paths which has never been on before. He finds himself in parts of the wood which are strange to him. He is lost. He hears a voice of two children calling out like him. Mother, mother. Surely that is Gobo and Fly Lane. It must be them. He runs quickly towards the voices and soon sees a red coat shining through between the leaves. Gobo and Fly Lane. They stand next to each other under dogwood, looking for Lorne and calling, Mother, mother. They're glad they can hear something rustling in the undergrowth. But they are disappointed when they see it is only Bambi. But they are a little bit glad to see him. And Bambi's glad he's not quite so lonely anymore. My mother's gone away Bam- somewhere, said Bambi. Ours has gone too, lamented Gobo. Look at each other in their dismay. But it, where could they be? asked Bambi, almost in tears. I don't know the size of Gobo. Hard of beating fast, he is feeling quite miserable. Suddenly Fernand says, I think they're with our fathers. Gobo and Bambi look at each other in amusement, astonishment. They are immediately gripped by the scene of awe. You mean with our fathers? said Bambi. Asham, you mean with our fathers? asked Bambi and shudders. Fernand shudders too, for she makes a face. She makes a face that seems to be saying a lot. She looks like someone who knows more than he is willing to say. She does not know anything at all, of course. She does not know where she got the idea from. But as Gobo repeats, Do you really mean that? She makes herself look clever and says each time, Yes, I think so. That is, of course, a guess, but it is at least worth thinking about. It does not make Bambi any less uneasy, though. He is now, now capable of thinking. He's too anxious and too sad. Mirza Maig does not like to spend too much time on this one spot. Fairlane and Gobo, go with him. A little way, all three of them call, Mother! Mother! But now Gobo and Fairlane have stopped. They do not dare go any further. Fairlane says, Where are we going? Our mother knows where we should be. Let's stay there so we can find, she can find us when she comes back. Bambi walks by himself. He wanders through a thicket where there is a little bare patch. In the middle of the bare patch, Bambi stops. It is his it is he, if he, is held there by his roots and cannot leave the spot near the edge of the air patch. In a tall, has a whole bush, he can make out a form. Baby has never seen a form like this. At the same time, the scent came to him in the air, a scent he had never smelt before. The strange aroma, heavy and sharp, exciting, enough to make you mad. Baby stares at the form, it was marvelously erect, exceptionally narrow. Has a pale face which is quite naked on the f- nose, around the eyes, horribly naked. It is, it is, it 
It, this is a face that projects a dreadful horror, cold and gruesome. His face has a monstrous power to it, power that could leave you crippled. His face is painful to behold, hardly bearable to behold, but Bambi nevertheless stands there and stares at it, captivated. The form remains there motionless for a long time. Then it reaches one leg out, a leg that's positioned high up, puts it near its face. Bambi did not notice that he was there at all. His terrible leg stretches right into the air, in many, and it has, it and it, and it is merely this gesture that sweeps Bambi away, a candle in the wind. In an instant, he is back in the thicket. He has just left, and he runs. And his mother is back with him. He leaps through the bush and undergrowth, licks him. The children run as fast as they can. His mother leads the way. She knows the path, and Bambi follows. In this way, they keep running until they are at the entrance to the chamber. Did you, did you see that? Asked his mother gently. Bambi could not answer. He has no breath left. He merely nods. That was, that was him, she says. The two of them shuddered in horror.